Welcome to Discipline Daily, where we put discipline first. In today's episode, we are going to go over what exactly it takes to become a juggernaut at Twitter and make a positive impact on the world. But before we get into that, me and Nick are going to go over some of the things that we're working on and some of the ways we are getting better. So what's up, Nick? How you doing, buddy? Doing good, Kyle. Uh, just started being able to work out again uh, from that rib injury that I had. Today was my first day doing chest again, and it was uh, it was good. I didn't really have too much pain. I didn't try to go like super intense or heavy, but I did the full workout, just a little bit lighter, and um, so far so good. Not not too much pain. So, so what about you? Besides your rib injury, are you dealing with any other injuries right now at the moment? Um, no, nothing significant. I, I kind of have a little bit of a hip issue because I've been squatting super deep. And the other day I kind of, when I was squatting, I kind of like tweaked my hip a bit, like in my, my, um, hip flexor, but, uh, I kind of massaged it and I put some heat on it and I kind of like, kind of went away. So that kind of acts up here and there, but other than that, nothing really. Um, have you tried sitting in the crisscross applesauce style? Oh yeah, I do that every night when I do my stretches. I'll do the uh, the butterflies, and I'll try to push my my knees down as far as I can. And then, uh, I mean, I'm pretty good at that, dude. That's the one thing that I've been wanting to talk to you about that I started, man. I started your little like stretching thing. So I do 15 minutes. I, I started off with meditation for about three minutes. And then I get into whatever I kind of need to work on that day. If it's a little bit more stretching, I'll stretch. If it's some core work, I'll do some core work. If it's, you know, my shoulders and my back needs a little bit of work, I'll lay face down on the ground and I'll do some back work. And man, I, so I've been doing it. This will be the fifth day in a row. So I like make it a, like an appointment with myself. I do it every night at 8 30 PM, you know, so you don't want to miss it. And man, I, I can't even tell you how excited I am about doing this. Cause I feel great now. And, and it's a small price to pay to feel this good, man. It's just 15 minutes every day. Yeah. I've been doing about 30 minutes every day. I try to do it right when I get home from work because my body's still warm from like working all day, working with my legs. Cause it's mostly my leg area that I need. I notice that I'm super tight in my hips and like my hamstrings and my quads, my quads are pretty tight too. So I'm like, okay, I really need to work on doing the, uh, the lower area. Uh, I still do upper body too. I'll do hangs. I think we talked about that before doing the hangs and uh, I'll work. I've been working on doing like some really good shoulder shoulder stretches where you hold a stick behind your back and you try to press it backwards almost like you're bench pressing backwards and it dude that thing lights up your shoulders oh yeah and it has your shoulders in a nice position backwards instead of being forward yeah um, and dude, i noticed i'm really this. tight there too so it's it's a good thing to do dude try this put lay face down and then put your arms at your side and then have them about a few inches off the ground and go all the way up, kind of like you're swimming, and just keep going back down, go all the way up, back down, and just keep that going for about 20 reps. Dude, your back will be on fire, your shoulders will feel phenomenal, and you get a nice little pump out of it, dude. I was doing that against the wall before, like where you put your, you kind of sit in the wall, keep your elbows on it, your lower back on it, and try to get your hands on the wall, and then you can like raise them up like this. And you can tell how tight your shoulders are when you do that. Yeah, but um, by going up against the wall, you're you're not working against gravity. Going face down, you're you're totally working against gravity the whole time. So, man, it's a killer. You could do the combination of both. Both are very beneficial. That's for sure. Yeah, I was going to ask you because I started doing Supermans which are where you lay face down and you kind of hold your arms like this, and you, you try to keep your legs and your arms off the ground. And that's been pretty good for my posture too. Yeah, man. A lot of people need to be doing this, especially because we're all 
hunched over, looking at the phone, looking at the computer, whatever it is, we need to bring it back. And it's a great way to strengthen your neck and all that stuff too. I like to, I like to just do little neck exercises with it too. And yeah, man, it's just a small price to pay for feeling great. Like I, I'm a hundred percent injury free right now and it feels good. Especially like if you work out a lot, you know, you're, you're always working out and contracting your muscle, your muscles can become tight. And if you're not stretching them out, then, you know, you're missing a whole part of like, you're missing a whole part that you can get. Like if you get into a stress position on a bicep curl, you can, if you can stretch them really far back and contract them, you're getting just so much more range of motion. You're getting so much more tension on that muscle that you're, you'd be missing out on if you weren't flexible. Some of the greatest bodybuilders in the world were like abnormally flexible. Yeah. Flexibility is the key, man. And uh, that's the one thing that people like to overlook. They'll go into the gym and worry about adding weight to the barbell or going heavier on dumbbells, but they're not thinking of using proper form, getting the fullest range of motion you could get because you're going to strengthen areas that you wouldn't strengthen unless you're going into those depths of range of motion. Yeah. And, and you get, you get a lot of longevity. Like if you're 50 or 60 years old and you have, you're super flexible, like just think about all the strength you're going to have because you're, you're strong in the most like stretched position. If anybody wants to like learn any more information on this, there's a great channel called it well, it's knees over toes guy. And he goes over a lot of that stuff, how to be strong and in, in crazy positions. Yeah, I, I love that guy, man. And he, he shows you that if you don't get into these positions that, you know, it kind of feels weird or it kind of hurts a little bit and you don't start kind of like stretching it out almost, you'll never be able to do that. So you got to kind of stretch your body to where you didn't think was possible. Yeah. And if you have like a, let's say you're tightening your hamstrings. And every time you go to bend over to like pick up something and you can't get into a flexible position with your hamstrings, something has to take over, like your lower back has to take over or, you know, something else has to take over. Your knees are put in a weird position so that your body has the right leverage. And then that's when you end up getting injured. That's when injuries happen. Yeah, man. And most people will think, you know, their knees, like that will hurt their knees or whatever else it is, but that's when... It's just everything around your knee is tight. It's not your actual knee that's the problem. So, yeah. Yeah, just some things to work on. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm falling in love with stretching, dude. I think if I really want to be able to be like in my 40s and 50s and be able to just, I almost like I can fold myself in half like a, like a pretzel. And it just, it's nothing for me. Like I'm good. <laughs> I can be like Jean Claude Van Damme, like do the splits. <laughs> and be lifting some weights over my head. <laughs> Dude, that's you know? the goal, man. Yeah, it keeps you young. It's it's yeah. that it's the use it or lose it method. That yep. if you and that's what people do. They, they you know they don't overhead press, so overhead pressing becomes more hard to do. It hurts more, and then they they shy away from it more and more. You so if you try, yeah. You got to do the movements and you got to keep it going or else it's going to become harder and harder. And as you get older, you're not going to be able to do it at all. And then you're just going to say, Hey, uh, I can't do that because I got a bad shoulder, whatever else it is. Yep. So it's dangerous, man. Hey, so, uh, what have you been reading? Uh, right now I'm reading influence. Um, I, I, I started reading it a while ago, but I kind of got, you know, out of the habit of reading. So I was like, okay. And I was reading the American conspiracy books. Um, but that one was getting to, I was like, it's getting repetitive. It was just like, everything was the CIA and the CIA is behind everything. And I'm like, okay, well, this is just getting, repetitive. <laughs> you know, the CIA is behind everything. Okay. I kind of already know that. So I was like, I'm going to go back to this, uh, influence book because I want to, I'm trying to study, Basically, I'm also reading The Laws of Human Nature by Robert Greene still. It's a really long book. I'm trying to get like one to two chapters every day at work through audiobook. But I'm basically just trying to, you know, become really good at like body language and, and 
the, how human nature is and how you influence people and, you know, and trying to get all that information so I can one, stay away from people using it on me. But number two is being able to use it for good to help people. Hell yeah, dude. That's, that's a good little goal, dude. I, and Hey, we're going to be on top of it. I'm, I'm going to, I want to see some progress with that. <laughs> what then, about you? Uh, what have you been reading? Yeah. The book I'm reading right now is pretty cool, man. It's called um, the strangest secret. It's by Earl Nightingale. It's a little bit of an older guy. book. Yeah. He's, he's dope, dude. Um, it's pretty cool. Basically the secret is, is we are our thoughts. It's as simple as that. So I think everybody really underestimates how powerful our minds are. And the more I really dive into it, man, everything in our society is designed to distract us from how powerful we are. And they keep us distracted with alcohol, sports, Netflix, celebrities, just junk, TikTok. And you... You can't let these distractions get to you. You got to, in order to become successful and be a part of the 1%, you have to do what they do. They, they don't do that. They don't consume, they create. So we got to get better as a society and create more than we consume. And you can't fall for all their traps. Yeah. It kind of goes back to our our episode on, on self-talk. So if anybody wants to go back and listen to that one, but yeah, everything is, you know, what you tell yourself every day and it's also what you're consuming. So it's not just with, I think we've talked about this before, but it's not with just food. It's what content are you consuming? What things are you taking in? And a lot of times we're getting propaganda thrown at us every day through news and through what you read on, you know, either Twitter or what you see on YouTube. It's like, it's, it's just propaganda. You don't know if it's real or not, you know, but a lot of people take that in and then they use that to have an opinion. And it's like, well, you don't know all the facts on your opinion. So you should always be questioning your opinions, always be questioning yourself. Why do I believe this? Why do I think this? Is this real? Or is this something I picked up from somebody else? Is this my real thoughts? Is this not my real thoughts? I think that's something everybody should do, you know, once a week, once a, every day. Once a month. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, it kind of makes me think of, uh, I, I was on Twitter today and there's a lot of people talking about college degrees and, you know, my thinking about college degrees, I, I think it's a complete scam. Um, and I, I remember being 18, about to graduate high school. And, you know, I see all my friends applying to colleges and, and then I think, okay, well, I guess I got to apply to colleges. So I, I applied to a few. I got accepted to Chico and Cal State San Marcos. And then I thought to myself, I'm like, okay, well, who's going to pay for this? And I didn't even want to ask my parents because I'm not going to expect for them to pay for my college, right? So I thought about it. And then... And then I was like going over the costs and, and I saw like how much they were charging for just a book for the class. And I thought that was insane because I'm like, dude, books don't cost this much. Why, why is a book costing this much? And then you just got to ask yourself, it's like, are you going to college because you think it's what you need to do? Or are you doing it because everybody else is doing it? And I think the majority of people do it because that's what they see everybody else doing. And then they just step in line and follow the herd. And yeah. that's not how I, I live my life. I literally, I, I want to separate myself from the crowd. And you need to do that because that's how you find your true identity, become yourself. And being yourself is... It's a great asset. So you need to be yourself. You need to think for yourself and not follow the herd. Yeah. I think personally it comes down to what you want to do. 
I mean, if you want to be a doctor, if you want to be a dentist, if you want to be a physical therapist, if you want to be, you know, some of these things, I mean, you kind of have to go to school to do that. Um, you know, but if, if you don't know what you want to do and you're just doing it because it's the next step in line, it's like, oh, I just graduated high school. Everybody's going to college, which is what happened with me. It was like, oh, I have to go to college because everybody's doing it. And what else am I going to do? You know, so it, you kind of feel this pressure, like you have to go to college, but there's so many examples of people that, that didn't go to college and made a, you know, made their life great. So I don't think you need it, but if you, if you want to have a career in a certain thing, then you kind of have to go. Exactly. Yeah. If, if your career requires it, then it makes sense. Otherwise, if you're just going to go and you're not sure what you want to do with your life. Yeah. It doesn't make sense at all. So, I mean, you wouldn't want your heart surgeon to be like, Oh yeah, I just did this on my own. You know, I've never went to school. I just, <laughs> I just, you know, I just did it on YouTube, figured it out on YouTube. And <laughs> it's like, ah, nah, dude, I'm sorry, but you ain't working on my heart. <laughs> That's very true. Yeah. All self-taught man. <laughs> all self-taught dude. Self-taught. <laughs> No, bro. You ain't coming near me. <laughs> yeah, right. All right, man. So let's get into how to be good at Twitter. And in this, I have nine steps. So follow these nine steps. Make a larger impact on the world. All right. Step number one, follow interesting accounts that get a lot of attention, comments, and views. And then you want these to kind of align with your passions, something that you know a little bit about, something that you're passionate about. You want to follow those accounts. So that's step one. Step two, turn their notifications on. So when they post, you'll be notified that they posted because it's all about time, guys. You got to be fast. This is their net. It's basically the first one to get there first and have something interesting to say. That's that's how you get better at speed, yeah. speed, speed. Yep, it's speed, man. So three, when notified, as quickly as you can, respond with something that is interesting. Sometimes it can be funny. Something that makes people think. Something that is outlandish something that is controversial, or even the truth. Guys, you got to speak your mind. That's the name of the game with Twitter. Because especially if you're thinking for yourself, it's going to make you stand out. Because a lot of the internet is kind of group think. You, you'll notice that. So if you look at the comments on some of these posts, everybody's basically saying the same thing. You got to kind of think a little differently. I think everybody like nowadays too, is trying to be like politically correct. They don't know what to say. They don't want to get called out and be like, Oh, you're this, you're that. But you know, at the end of the day, like we have to be able to have discussion in this country and we have to be able to talk about things and say things that people aren't going to like and be able to talk it out. And, you know, sometimes mm -hmm. that's the thing you need to say, like, and people aren't saying it because they're afraid can't be afraid. You got to go out there and put yourself out there and be like yes. Conor McGregor. Conor McGregor talks crap. And that's what gets everybody to want to see his fight because they either want to see him fail or they want to see him succeed. Yes. Yes. It's all about attention. So that's how you have to think about it. But you want to get the attention in a good way. You don't want to do it in a negative, gross way, guys. We're trying to make a large impact on the world. You can't be negative. So actually try to fix problems. That's, that's what life's about is fixing problems. So help fix the problems. All right. And then number four, also get into healthy debates with accounts with large followings. Concentrate on large followings. If they don't have a large following, it's not even worth your time really debating these people online because most of the time they're just trolls. So you want to only kind of debate the large accounts with large followings. That's how you get a lot of attention. Number five, provide value. Give people a reason to follow you. You have to ask, like, why would somebody want to follow me? Am I providing value? Am I giving people a reason to follow me? 
Number six, don't be afraid to plant seeds. This one's kind of a tough one because a lot of people are afraid to put their opinion out there. So you can't be afraid to plant that seed and you have to almost think, I'm kind of writing for the future. History's written on Twitter. People can go back years in the past and they can see. So you got to think of how it's going to be in the future. How is this going to look in the future? So don't be afraid to plant that seed. All right, number seven, post at the right time. You can't, like, if you're doing your own posts on your profile, you need to think, okay, well, when are people most likely to see it? When are people most likely to use Twitter? They, they probably use it in the mornings. So you'll want to post it in the morning and then they'll probably use it kind of close to night. So post your good posts at the right time. And then number eight, collect memes. Do you have a meme collection, Nick? I mean, every time I see a, a funny one, I'll take a screenshot of it, keep it in my and, camera roll to send it to people. <laughs> yeah, do you, have a, um, do you have an album where you put all your memes? No. You need to, so the key is, yeah, that's good with collecting them, right? You wanna start a collection of memes because you never know when that meme can come in handy. And the right meme at the right time on the right post gets a lot of attention. So the key with it is you want to collect it, right? But make an album in your phone and only put your memes in there. So you'll see a post. And then if you think a meme, you, you might remember, oh, I have a meme that kind of fits what's going on here. So you go to your album and it's all about speed, guys. You got to do this fast. That's why you have an album where you have all your memes there so you could find it quick because you want to be fast, right? So then boom, you put in that meme. So memes, guys, start collecting them. They're valuable, all right? And then number nine, don't be afraid to be yourself. Say the truth. Stand up for what you believe in. Be a leader. Think differently, guys. And if you do all nine of these, you will get better at Twitter. I guarantee it. I think the takeaway for me from those nine is just to know your opinion, what you want to say, and put it out. Don't be afraid to put it out there. And don't be afraid to put it out there on big profiles. And it might be controversial to some, but, you know, that's either good or bad. It's you're getting people's attention. And it's good to have those conversations. It's good to have that debate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. And people underestimate the power of Twitter. We literally, with the right tweet, you could change the course of history. That's how powerful it could be. If you're following big name accounts like Elon Musk or whoever the president is, right? And they're saying stuff. You can potentially change the course of history, guys, if you think large enough. So don't when you, underestimate it. When you first started, like, implementing these rules and started to get a following, was there any part of you that kind of felt like, you know, I, I shouldn't be saying this. Maybe that's the, maybe I shouldn't be putting my opinion out there. And how did you deal with that? Yes, big time, man. That's that's how I, I've started to figure all this stuff out. It took me a while to kind of have the courage to put my opinion out there. And I just realized that, you know, in order to be a leader, you got to have courage. You got to voice your opinion. You got to stand up for what you believe in. So that's exactly what I'm doing. And in today's day and age, man, we all we're fighting a battle on the internet. So the way I look at it, if, if I don't put good out into the internet, evil will just continue to reign supreme. So I, I'm or doing bots. what I can to try to, huh? Or bots. Yeah. And they use bots to, to run whatever narrative they're trying to run. So I, I'm trying to do my best to just, change we got to change the world guys we can't just be stuck in this negative show 
our whole lives, you know, we're, we can, we can turn things around. Yeah. I mean, if the good people stay quiet and allow all the people with the negative and, and bad things to say, go without being opposed, then they win, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of people are, are good people and they get afraid to, to interact with these people because they don't want to be called a racist or they don't want to be called a bigot or they don't want to be called like some, something along those lines. But the people who throw these words around like they're like they're everywhere when in reality it's like it doesn't make you a racist if you have an opinion. I mean, there are some people that are definitely racist, but if you say something and somebody doesn't like it and like, it doesn't make you a racist hmm. no, or a bigot or, you know, someone that's, uh, you know, anti this or anti that. Yeah. And the sad thing is they're it's it's like the boy who cried wolf like they're degrading those words and you need to save those words for actual cases or else it'll just lose its meaning yeah it waters it down because if, you know if you let's say you you know disagree with the vaccines and somebody calls you an anti-vaxxer or, or something like that it's like well, no, it's just me having an opinion. But now you're taking people who are actually anti-vaxxers and actually people who are crazy and want people to, you know, hurt people and want to do these bad things. You're making them like seem like they're nothing. And, and you know, you're making innocent people who just having a different opinion seem like they're like those people. When in reality, that's not the case. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, guys. So I hope you take these tips and you use them correctly. Um, but yeah, you want to be interesting. Nobody wants to follow anyone that's not interesting, guys. So in order to become interesting, you got to actually have some life experiences. You can't be watching Netflix. You can't be watching TikTok. Don't just sit back and watch other people live their dreams and and live their lives you got to go out there live your life have an opinion stand for what you believe in and make a difference in the world yeah guys so i i really hope that you follow me on twitter cal Saint cal or at tesla spaceship i'm sitting at 1575 followers man so ever since i started using this I gain about 10 followers a week and I'm st like, I'm trying to see when it starts ramping up, but I know it will. And, you know, I set that goal of 10,000 followers by the end of the year. I might not hit that goal, but I know at this pace, I should get pretty dang close guys. So, and I think and we need bro, to do an episode on the, the compound effect. Because these things compound. So, you know, Kyle has, you know, over a thousand followers right now. But with that many followers, now you start getting people who are following them to see him. And then he'll gain more followers. And then over time, it just compounds to where you get more and more and more and even more and even more. And it becomes like almost like a snowball effect. Yeah. And see that the, the thing is, too, is people kind of give up, right? I've, I've been at it hammering for about two months. So it's been a while, but I'm not, you know, I'm gaining, but I'm not gaining that quickly, but it takes a while to start seeing the compounding effect happen. So I'm, I'm having faith in that and I'm just going to keep hammering, stay disciplined and just keep working at it every day. And I know with enough time I'll get there. Yeah. I think nowadays everybody wants things fast. You know, they want to drive fast. They want to get to their destination fast. They want their Wi-Fi and their media hits to be fast. I mean, it's just like we talked about with dopamine. They want it fast, 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 fast. Now, 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 now. They want to work. They want to get muscles right now. They want to get everything they have right now, now, now. They're impatient. But really what it comes down to is just almost like putting a blindfold on and just being consistent every single day, being consistent, doing the work. And then eventually in three, four, five, six, even maybe even 10 years, who knows? You take that blindfold off and you look at where you are. 
but you just keep on pushing and you don't get in your head and start getting down on yourself and start putting yourself down like, oh, I can't do it. You don't do any of that. You just say, okay, maybe I'm not where I want to be, but I'm going to try even harder now to go, to go to where I want to be, to do what I need to do. You don't allow that stuff to affect you and you just allow the compound effect to do its job. Bro, it's, it's almost inevitable. You just got it. Just keep reminding yourself, if you put in the work every single day with enough time, you will get there, guys. So just keep that in the back of your mind. A little bit of work every single day. Don't get distracted. And I advise you guys to learn how to use Twitter and actually take Twitter a little more seriously because Elon Musk bought Twitter, right? You got to ask yourself, why would he buy Twitter? It's probably because it's pretty important, right? And he has said multiple times that he will be bringing monetization to Twitter. So if you start building your business now, once the monetization pops off, you're going to have some nice, almost passive income. Because I, I kind of use Twitter passively, and I think I use it the correct way of I, I mainly use it to jot down my thoughts. When I have an interesting thought happen, instead of just letting it go on by and forgetting about it, I put it down on Twitter. So I think everybody needs to really do that because you're once again, you're creating something that you can look back on and it's basically a digital diary. So. And I think you could probably use those rules for other things too, you know, like, Use it for if you want to be good with Instagram, if you want to be good with TikTok, if you want to be good podcasting. I mean, that's kind of what we're doing. You know, we're just making another episode, making another episode, getting good behind the camera. It's like you just got to keep on keep on doing it. Just keep on going. Yeah, you can't come out the gate and expect it like to kill it right off the bat. It's just not how things work, guys. It takes a long time and you have to remain patient and that's the one thing I've been working on for a few years now is patience. Like I used to have zero. I am a lot better than I used to be. And uh, yeah, I just, I remain patient. I know I put it, if I put in the work every single day, I'll get there. And I have a long-term thinking. You got to think long-term, put in the work today for benefits down the road. Yep. Yeah, man. So uh, one day, hopefully, we'll see if Nick makes a Twitter, guys. It'll be his first social media in how long? Let's see. Uh, since twenty beginning of 2019, so four years. Yeah, guys. So Nick doesn't have any social media. I just think it's something, too, like people have got to realize is, like, what, what do you want to do? Like, Kyle really enjoys – I mean, you really enjoy putting, you know, your your thoughts out there, and you really have this – goal of like helping people or, or getting your you know your opinion across and that's something that you really enjoy so for you this is something that's you know really good information but for someone like me it's like i have my opinion but i have more of the mindset of like you know my opinion is my opinion and everybody's entitled to their opinion and i don't really care so much about putting my opinion out there um i, I care a little bit more about trying to just give knowledge that I've learned or things that I've learned. And for me, Twitter is just not, I don't know. I just don't, I haven't connected with it. It's a great way to get the knowledge that you have though, and get it to lots of people and potentially change their lives. Yeah. Like I, I mean, there's other ways too. I mean, we got this, we got the podcast. Yeah. And... I know. Yeah. But like on Twitter, I've, I've, I can't even, I can't even count how many lives I've actually changed, man. I get messages like from random people all over the world, Spain, Lithuania, all over of, of people that I've really impacted. And, and I wouldn't have been able to do that without Twitter. So it's, it's, it's pretty cool. I mean, if, if like, if you actually want, like, yeah, I guess if you actually want to make a difference in the world, you know, but some people, yeah, some people don't. You know, not everybody wants to do what I want to do. I'm just saying it's, it's, if you guys are, I, I know people like money, you like money, right? Like if, if you're trying to get money, 
like I said, they're bringing monetization to Twitter. So it's an easy way to make money. So everybody's got their, you know, if you want to make money, cool. If you want to help people and change people's lives, and then you'll get money as a byproduct, it's all good. All right, guys. So I hope you found that useful. I know you probably did because it is not like any other info you will get. If you ask ChatGPT how to be good at Twitter, it's going to come up with all bunch of generic bull crap. So, all right. So let's get into some Twitter news. Twitter news. We'll start this one off with... One of my buddies here on Twitter, he's a fellow Tesla investor. It's Tesla Wolf. He, he came up with the post, it's hard money. In 1964, the minimum wage was five 90% silver quarters. In 2021, five 90% silver quarters have a melt value of $23.34. We don't need minimum wages, we need sound money. Did you know about silver quarters, Nick? I mean, I knew that paper money is fake and fiat. Oh, but did you, did you know that there was silver quarters at one point? Yeah. Yeah, so anything pre-1964, for the most part, was silver, right? Do you know about copper pennies? Mm -hmm. Copper yeah. pennies, silver, silver quarters, yeah. Yeah, so copper pennies is anything 1982 and under. Right, it's 95% copper. And I'll give you a short little story. It's kind of kind of crazy um, of how I got down this rabbit hole of collecting copper pennies. Um, it all started when I was gonna go refinance my truck, right? For some reason I needed a credit union. So I went to this Wells Fargo um, about midway through where I lived and had to go to work. And I met a girl there that was helping me and she was putting in my information and stuff. And it turned out that she was my neighbor. Hmm. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. So where I oh, used to live, the neighbors were really far away cause it's really rural. Like I grew up on five acres. Um, so we didn't really know some of our neighbors, right? And she was literally right across the street, but you know, almost about a half mile away. So we started dating after that. And <laughs> she wanted to take me out to Glamis, which is the sand dunes, right? And I, I've never been out there. So it was my first time out there. And we went out there and we went in a dune buggy and we went over, a, go over a dune. We went over a thing called a razorback. Yeah. And straight which, down. Yeah, which leads to basically nothing once you go off it. Yeah, you have and, to ride the top part and then look yeah. down and then go down into it. Yeah, and we crashed. And three out of the four people broke our broke their backs. Oh, I, I was one of them. Um, I got compression fractures in my spine. And we were all life flighted out of there. So the reason I started collecting pennies was because I was in a back brace for six months. So I got into some weird stuff and, and it, copper pennies is pretty cool. So I would go to the bank, I'd give them $20 cash and they would give you a brick of pennies. And I would just go through them and sort them into copper versus not copper, then take the not copper ones back. And I have a nice little copper penny stash. You still have it? <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, um, you can't melt the pennies yet, but hopefully one day they'll lift the ban and I got a whole bunch of copper pennies. <laughs> yeah, it's a neat little story, huh? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was cooler back in the day when we went off the gold standard and had actual silver coins and, and copper coins instead of the fake stuff that we have now today. It's just yeah. not as good. Yeah, you got to you got to diversify. You got to have a little bit of everything, guys. Don't have all your eggs in one basket. All right. So, next up. This is from the subconscious mind. Society will judge you for being yourself. They will judge you anyway. So just be the best version of yourself. 
Yeah, dude, I think about this all the time. It's like, cause I have this problem where I always like am wondering if what I'm saying is like offending somebody or if somebody's thinking what I'm saying is weird. And you always want to like think in your head, is this person judging me? But at the end of the day, they're going to judge you no matter what. You could say the coolest thing. You could be the perfect person at talking and, and just wow them with something. And they could still go away thinking, oh, that guy's weird. Oh, that guy's this. It's like you can never control what another person is going to think of you. So it's almost like you're scaring yourself or you're making yourself nervous about what somebody's going to think of you when you can never control that. So it's something that I have to work on every day is like trying to not care what other people think of me and how I am. And you put like this pressure on yourself to be like, to be a certain way or to not be yourself or to not look stupid or to not say something dumb. And it's like, once you can get that free, I feel like once you get that freedom of not caring about what anybody thinks of you, it's like, that is like the superpower. That's where I'm at. (laughs) Uh, but yeah, man, it's it's almost like you're trying to cater to other people. So you mm-hmm. kind of try to focus whatever action on action you take on whatever could cater to them the most. When you, you're trying to cater to them, you can't do that. You got to think for yourself. Be yourself, guys. That's that's the greatest asset we have. I mean, you don't want to come off as being an asshole either. It's like it's like this fine line where I think you have to just know in your head, if you're not being mean, if you're just being yourself and you're not trying to be an asshole and you're not like talking crap to somebody or being rude to somebody, and you know that there's no reason for you to like care what other people are thinking about you. Because even if they take it as, Oh, that guy was an asshole or, Oh, that guy was rude. It's like, well, I wasn't meaning to be that way. I'm just being myself. If you took it that way, that's on you. And that has nothing to do with me. That's your opinion. And I can't control your opinion and I shouldn't even have to worry about your opinion. Yeah. Yeah. I don't care if somebody thinks that. Cause I'm sure plenty of people think I'm an asshole when it's like, that's yeah, what they, I, I, it doesn't matter to me. It has no effect on my internal feelings. I don't let external events impact how I feel internally at all. So that's why I honestly, I don't care what other people think. Cause I have a mission. I'm sticking to the mission. And you know, if, if you want to be with it, you be with it. If you want to be against it, that's fine with me. It doesn't matter. Yeah. So. All right. And then last up, this is a post that I did. Most of us know what to do and what is the best for success. Lack of information is not the problem. The real problem is the actual execution. Our life is full of distractions bombarding you all at once. Ignore the noise, show up daily, and put in the work. We were kind of talking about this earlier, but man, the more I think about it, it is really, it's 100% the key, guys, is showing up daily, putting in the work every day. Try not to break that streak. See how long you can go, guys. Don't Think to yourself like, oh, it's Saturday. Oh, it's Sunday. I'm, I get to let loose, relax. Don't think that way. If you want to make a, a big change and a big impact in this world, you got to ask yourself, are people, are, are the people I'm competing against, are they doing this or are they out there hammering? Yeah. What do you think, Nick? Yeah, I think that, you know, that like, I think we've talked about this before, but like, I, I would like to create the person that I want to be that's like way better than me. I try to create him in my brain. And, and every day I tell myself, what is he doing? It, did, it, did he get up today and do his workout and you're staying in bed? No, you need, if you want to be him, you need to get up out of bed and, and beat him. If he did 10 reps. Guess what? You got to do 11 reps. Guess what? He read 10 pages. Guess what? You need to read 20 pages. If you want to be better than him, I mean, trying to compete with other people, I think to me is a little bit like hard to do because everybody has a different starting point. But if you really create the person that you want to be and you know exactly what things you have to do, like you said, then you have to, you can meet that by being in competition with that person, the person that you want to be and trying to beat that person every single day. And that helps me stay on track when I wake up at five and I'm like, ah, 
you know, I really don't want to work out today. It's squat day. I'm tired. It's raining. But I say, I say in my head, the person that I want to be has massive legs. He can squat 315 ass to grass for 10 solid reps. You can barely do two, 210. So get up and get going. You have a lot of work to do to catch up. And then that gets me fired up. I get up, get out of bed. And, you know, once I'm out of bed and doing it, I don't even think about like, oh, I'm tired. Oh, I don't want to do this. It's like, I'm already up and doing it. I like that, man. Compete with yourself. And that's the best way to do it. Don't focus on what other people are doing because they're not at the same stage that you are. It, it's stupid to compete against other people that are in different stages of their lives. They have different goals. They have different everything. Compete with yourself. I like that. Yeah. Yeah, they have different genetics. Like, you know, I'm never going to be Tom Platts, like the way his legs were, like in squatting 500 pounds as the grass, whatever. I'm just not built like him. It's just he has a whole different body structure. Can I get close? Yeah, I can get as close as I can get. But I have to compete with myself. I can't be competing with other people that have a completely different makeup than me, you know, different different circumstances, you know, different. They get dealt different cards in life. And sometimes I think people look at those people and they compare themselves to those people. And it's like, you, you got dealt different hands. You have to take the hands of cards you got dealt and play those cards and be as strong as you can at those cards that you got dealt. Yeah. But don't, don't let like genetics be an excuse. Yeah. You know, I mean, exactly. That's what I just said. It's like, you know, you can get as close as you can get to a certain place, but yeah. But some people are like, oh, I can never get there. So I'll just. So why try? You can try. But <laughs> yeah. yeah, you guys. You, just be genetic, the best you, you can be, you know? Yeah. Like, I, I honestly, I don't even believe in that genetics thing. I I think if it might be a little harder for certain people, but if you give it your all, I mean, how many people can say they gave it their all? Like every 100%. Yeah. I, I, I don't know. I don't think you can do that. So you don't know until you actually give a hundred percent effort. So make sure you give a hundred percent effort. So let, we're going to start wrapping this up. And uh, one thing I wanted to tell you, dude, is uh, I've written in my journal every day for the past 50 days. Wow. Yeah. What man. have you noticed from that? I, I, the one thing I'm noticing, man, is just that I'm able to show up and write in the morning without, like, I have things to say every single day, every single morning. And a lot of people ask me, you know, like, what do you write about in your journal? Because they wouldn't know what to write about on a daily basis, which to me, I think that's kind of scary. You should be able to put out useful information every single day. Um, but yeah, I, I've just been noticing just all types of benefits, man. It's, it's, I'm so glad that I started this and I wish I would have started it earlier, but I'm really excited about this for the future. Cause I literally, I plan on doing this for the rest of my life. It, yeah. It's funny. Cause I do think there are a lot of people out there that don't, they try not to think about anything. They try not to even like think about what they're doing. It's just kind of, they're almost like NPCs, you know, they just don't think anything. They don't have any kind of opinion and they don't, and they just go around life, like just go through life, like just not thinking about anything, just doing the same old thing every single day, you know, and then they wonder why they don't get anywhere. It's like, well, you're not, you're doing the same thing every day. That's literally the definition of insanity. It's doing the same thing every day and wondering, how come I'm not rich? You're doing the same thing every day. You're probably doing what your family did and they're not rich. Is that you got to do different things. Yeah, man. Thinking, thinking hurts. It's, it's difficult. You got to actually, yeah, you got to use your mind. So I hope you guys got value out of this episode. And if you did, please share it. And I like button too. Yeah, you could smash whatever you want. Smash your TV for all I care. Don't say smash. <laughs> yeah. Just uh, click. <laughs> yeah, just click it. Yeah, send this episode to a friend, guys. 
and, and create a Twitter. I'm telling you, create a Twitter now. Start building for the future. Follow me on Twitter, Cal Sent Kyle. I post all types of interesting stuff. Well, I think it's interesting. You might hate it. You might love it. I don't know. So follow me on Twitter. And uh, that was a great episode, Nick. Another one in the books. Yeah, buddy. You just got right. 10,000 more to go. Yeah. We won't stop until hell freezes over, guys. So pain is good. Pain is great.